Okay, we always start with the market update before we get into the presentation. I'm just gonna move some stuff so I can see my numbers here. Um, what we've got highlighted is, is the last column. Um, you can see the percentage change in October. This is monthly, month over month. It's very low. So we're not seeing those month over month increases that we saw a couple months ago, three, four months ago, where they were very, very high. What this is suggesting is that the market is finally starting to slow down a bit. Um, we were getting into multiple offer situations, uh, no condition offers from probably July onwards. So it was a crazy, crazy market. That's starting to settle down now. Yeah. And we believe it's the interest rates that are doing it. And the uh, uncertainty of what's gonna happen when people have to renew in the new year. So um, people are starting to watch their pennies. Inflation's high, you know, your mortgage is high, your rent's high. Uh, you're starting to see the real estate market slow down a little bit. And another number that reflects that is the new listings. If you can see that the new listings, they went mm -hmm. from 397 to 542. So that's a big monthly, month over month uh, gain. Um, you're starting to see more listings come on and they're not being absorbed as quickly as they used to be. So we're seeing that as a market slowdown. Um, we'll go to the yearly stats right there. Um, so if you look year over year, this is right up to today. I picked these stats up this morning. Um, the average price is down a little bit over last year. And, oh, sorry, no, the average price is up. The total sales are down mm -hmm. almost 10% from last year. So last year's market was the hottest market we've ever seen. Uh, we sold the most properties in Calgary ever. And because of these interest rate, rate hikes, those number of sales are coming down, but they're still quite high. If you look back to um, 2020, which we don't have before, 2020 and 2019 were COVID years. The, the number of sales were very, very low. Um, started to rise as we got out of there. And now we're starting to see that curve come down again. Uh, whether or not it goes even further down in the number of sales next year really depends on how quickly the economy turns around and how the public perceives these interest rate hikes, whether they think it's gonna drop or whether they think they're gonna go back up. Uh, the last thing, average price up 4% so far this year. What we said to the people in the room here before the meeting started is we thought next year would be a very, very low increase year over year. We think 2024 is gonna be anywhere from two to 4% increase. And this year we'll end up in that same little slot there, two to 4%. Yeah, and that's all you need it to do. Where we do see the increases coming next year is in properties under 400,000. So we're already seeing that this year. You might be seeing 4% growth across the board there, but condos have actually gone up 10%. So as investors, it's our job to understand which communities or which sector of the market is going to go up more than others, okay? And then at the same time, which sector is going to rent out easy and cash flow at the same time. So we're very excited going into the new year and going into the end of the season because inventory seems, Tim, just to come up a little bit right now, which gives us more options. To speak to where we're at with our investors, we have investors sitting on the fence right now because we have nothing for them. When I say nothing for them, we're waiting for a property to come on and then there's 10 other offers and then we have to work out our analysis on every property to see which one makes sense. So you need a good realtor that's gonna have your back making you understand that um, if the property's gonna cash flow or not. Okay. Yeah, we've had some really, really nice rental properties pop up on the market and investors go after them, but we've had to pull them back once the offers get so competitive that they're bidding up the price mm -hmm. way above where it's going to cash flow or way above you're going to see a decent yeah. return. So, you know, you might see that perfect property, but in a market like this, there's a ton of other people bidding for that same property. And the problem is there's homeowners bidding for that property. Mm -hmm. Even the suited ones, you know, the rundown rentals, homeowners are bidding for those because their choice is so small right now. Yeah, so for us, the market's actually getting a little bit better. And the other scary thing is with, I think Tim, the last slide I had 350 sales or something like that. If you divide, if we're in day seven of the month here, 350, so it's 50 sales per day. The funny thing about that, there's 7,000 realtors in the city, right? And only 50 sales a day. So. Tough business to be in right now, if anyone's thinking about being a realtor. Um, and at the end of the day, 
we hope that more properties come on the market because there's definitely people out there looking for properties, but there's not the right properties on the market. And we do get phone calls about properties. Um, I know up on the west side in Aspen, up where I live, you know, people are seeing Tim for sale signs stay up longer right now. And typically what's happening to those properties is that they've been overpriced, okay? And unfortunately what happens, we actually love these properties when they're overpriced because what happens is they sit, they sit, they sit, and then they normally get frustrated. And that's how we get most of our deals. I mean, a lot of the deals we do are off market properties. That's what we offer our clients. Our investors get the first pick of our investment properties. But at the same time, Tim, if the property is overpriced, it will sit. It will sit. We took one on uh, last month in West Springs. Um, it came on at 800000 We watched it. We watched it. We actually got the listing, put it on for seven fifty, priced it where it had to be, and sold for seven forty eight in two days. So if a property is priced, it will move in this market. But unfortunately, people are aiming for the stars. Yeah, and and that happens always at the beginning of an upswing in the market. At the beginning of this year, people were pricing them higher and higher and higher, and that makes sense when the market is really starting to rise. But ne it never fails to reach that peak and then come down again. And it's the people that are throwing their houses on the market on the way down just after the peak. They're the ones that price themselves too high. And unfortunately, they'll sit there for a while until the price comes down or until they accept a lower offer. Yeah, and it's really for the investors out there that are thinking of flipping homes, you really have to look at the last, we even Tim look at the last 30 days when we're picking up these properties to flip. You really have to crunch your numbers on the last 30 days, not the last year, because what they were getting in March, June, they're not getting in November, December, January. So you have to understand and you have to look at renovated properties that are selling for that price today and compare the outcome to that. We just yeah. want to stress that. Okay, so we'll get Danielle on. She's our mortgage, uh, real estate mortgage expert. She does, she not only gives you or gets you into a mortgage, she gets you into the long-term plan. So if your plan is to have two, three, four rental properties down the road, she will set it up properly with the lenders so that you can do that and you just don't blow your chances on the first one by getting into the wrong mortgage type. Hey, Danielle. Thanks. Hello, how are you guys? Good. Thank you for having me. Okay, so yeah, on on in light of talking market statistics, I just kind of wanted to touch base. I was able to attend uh, a lender seminar today where we had some great speakers just kind of touching base on what are we gonna see? How are things going in the economy? Um, so one of the things they were talking about, obviously we all are aware the U S is pretty big and we base a lot of our uh, decisions on what they do and, and how they react to certain things. So typically there's about 215,000 job loss applications in the U S if you can imagine, uh, every time that the, you know, the U S is looking and, and seeing what are they going to do with rates and, and how's inflation coming along. And so, um, that's something to watch for. So I just kind of wanted to give you guys a couple of things to be watching for. So job loss uh, in the US is one thing to be watching for. Um, November 14th coming up is the US inflation announcement. So be watching for that as well. Uh, if the inflation, actual inflation rate is lower than the consensus rate, then we're likely to kind of see rates start to decrease. So be watching for that uh, mid-November and the job loss. Now, one of the things that, that kind of came up is, is inflation and the government spending and how government spending is affecting inflation and not necessarily consumer spending per se. So uh, one of those things that we are watching right now is bond yields. So with the bond yields, these are what are affecting our fixed rates. And for those of you that have been purchasing or looking at purchasing over the last year, you've been seeing those bond yields creep up. We've been seeing fixed rates creep up. But what we saw in the last week or so here was we did see a dip in bond yields. And so then as a result, we've seen fixed rates come down this last week. And we're talking from on average, you know, five, nine, four to five, six, nine. So it's almost a 0.3% decrease in interest rates in the last you know, few days to week, which is a pretty big drop. And it is also allowing people to spend a little bit more when we talk about ratios and qualifying the lower the rates, obviously, the more we can spend. So we are seeing a little bit of a drop. Um, common our talks are, are kind of saying that maybe a half a percent decrease 
uh, in 2024 on the prime lending rate. So those of you that are riding out the variable rate, continue to stick it out if you can. Hopefully there will be that decrease uh, coming in 2024. As far as fixed rates go, again, we saw a little blip with downward. We don't think they're going to trend downward until near the end of 2024 into 2025. But for those of you that are looking at purchasing and who are waiting on interest rates to, to drop, just something to really remember is supply and demand. So as interest rates start to come down, there's more buyers that are able to creep into the market in those certain price ranges because they're able to qualify. And so then what happens is as those buyers enter the market, now we have more buyers again, and our supply is going to be short again. So when you're looking at purchasing right now, even though rates are a little bit higher, you can always redo a mortgage in two or three years. But prices where they're at versus where they're potentially going to go because of, again, as rates go down, there's more buyers, which forces uh, prices to go up. So when you're looking at buying real estate, there's really not a bad time to buy and trying to time the market can be really tough because either rates are high or rates are low, but as rates come down, demand goes up. So that's all related. Um, it's going to be important to kind of watch in November, the U S like I said, inflation job loss to kind of see where we're going to head, uh, in December to finish off this year, as far as rates go. So that's kind of the, uh, market update on interest rates. There is another bank of Canada meeting coming up before the end of the year. So we'll see if there is that quarter point increase, or if they're going to keep it the same again, as we head into 2024. So. That's kind of where we're at right now. All right. Thanks, Danielle. No problem. Awesome. If anyone needs to get hold of Danielle, uh, just take down her details there. They'll be in the chat as well. Uh, we've been working with Danielle since 2006. Uh, we pride ourselves on uh, assembling an awesome real estate team. We've got mortgage brokers. We've got home inspectors. We've got lawyers. We've got accountants. Uh, everything that you need to successfully be a landlord or investor. Um, Danielle doesn't just get you a mortgage. She actually gives you a plan um, to buy multiple properties and our clients are doing amazing. Um, so yeah, reach out to her. It's worth a chat for sure. Okay, thanks, Danielle.